Okay, so this is video two for our integration for the area between two curves. Okay, so in our last video we've done the task one, C in terms of M. If you still remember, that C need to be four minus M. Okay, so that's A1 plus A3 would be, uh, will, will be A2. Okay, so that makes sure the area above the straight line equals the area below the straight line. And and now in task two, we, we try to show you how can we use uh, using how can we use decimals to find all these areas with different values of m. All right. So remember the equation straight line right now is m x plus four minus m. Okay. So let's go to the decimals. Okay, so here's our decimals. Okay, so first we will try to write the function of x squared. Okay, since we restrict our, our domain from minus two to four, so we can, you can just restrict the domain. Okay. So that's our first function. And our next function is gx equals mx plus four minus m. Okay, so we need a slide of m, so we just create a slide of m. Okay, so first of all, uh, we restrict the domain of x again. Okay, and let me just copy this one. Restrict the domain the same way, and also for m, there's a restriction as well. It must be from zero to four over three. Okay, so let's see. But we we might just get zero point one for our difference m. Okay, so right now you see when we change the value for m, the straight line is changing. Okay. Right, the next thing is to get the intersection point. How can we find the intersection point between fx and gx? So you see that there, there should be two intersection points, okay? And so the first intersection point is uh, between minus two and zero, okay? So how can we find the uh, intersection point? Here's the, here's the way to do it, oh, sorry. Just I need to go here, sorry. So you just put x1, okay. x1 uh, is for the first interval, okay. And use this symbol, x1. Okay, and you want to restrict the domain as well. So for the first intersection point, it seems like um, it should be between, x, uh, that x1 should be between minus two and zero, so you just restrict that. So you see that's an intersection point there, which is minus 1.56815. So you can see that if your m is changing, your intersection points are also changed, okay? Right, so that's the first intersection point, and you want to get the second intersection point, and, don't, and of course you want you don't want to do much of the typing, and you might just change the things right here. So it becomes x2, okay? And for our second intersection point, it seems like it's between zero and four, okay? So let's just put it there. So that's another intersection point. Okay, so this time, um, Okay, so I need to put x2, sorry. Um, okay, so the next intersection point is 2.05. Uh, so you see, here's the next intersection point. And so, again, when your m's change, when your m's changed, both x1 and x2 will be changed as well. So right now you've got the x1 and x2 as two uh, x values of the two intersection point. The next thing is to find the area, okay? So let's to find um, um, 
first area okay how can we find the first area okay you can use integration okay um, let's do this okay. hmm. So wait a minute. Okay, we continue. Uh, so you try to find the integration. Okay, so you you can just do integration. Okay, so you put you type in int, they will show you a definite integral. Okay, so that's for area one. So how can you do area one? It must be between minus two to um um to x1 right that's your first interval okay so just and that's between your fx and gx okay so fx is higher and you take away gx oh something wrong sorry i need to put okay so don't Okay, so then you will see the area, which is 0 0.26. Okay, so this area will be changed uh, if your M is changing, like, okay, so see if your M is changing, then you will just be changing as well. Okay, so that's your first, first boundary area. So let's create the second one. Okay, so the second one is from x1 to x2, but this time I need to put g in front of x. So that's our second area, which is below the x-axis, all right? And then I could have, I should have a third area. So third area should be from x2 to Four. Okay, and so that's another area. So, so you you can see if we add area one, that's the first integral, and uh, area three, that's the last integral. The value should be become the area two, right? But there's another way to make sure you're doing something right. Okay, so you can just create the integral from minus two to four. Okay, and you need to see that should be zero. So if from minus two to four, they, they will give you the sine area, which should be zero. That means you are, the process is all correct. So now you've got all the areas you want, okay, for the three areas, okay? And this area can be found by changing this M. So for all the M, Okay, so you see the areas, they always add up. So area one at area three always equals area two. And also you can see the area of two is also sometimes is greater, sometimes smaller. So that's why that make task three sensible because in task three we're going to find the minimum possible area two uh, with different M's, all right? Okay, so the next thing is to try to make uh, make them feel pretty. So first of all, I would try to um, get the graph centralized. Okay, so for x, we might go with minus 3 to our um, 5. Okay, for y value, possibly I just minus 1 to 8. Okay, so it looks much better, but we still want to do something like, can we shade the graph? Okay, can we shade the graph? So can we, sorry, can we shape, um, shape the area between the two graphs? Okay, to do that, um, you need to know um, there's a function in the um, uh, decimals, okay? You can do things like, okay, for example, if I try to get um, the area of the first part, which is from, which is below the fx, but above the gx. Okay, so I'm going to type in 
fx uh, okay and less than um, oh, sorry I should say that should be G okay um, and less than Y okay so you see if you put that that would be Y greater than GX but now I only want to be between GX and FX okay and and you want to restrict that to between minus 2 and x and that should be x1 okay so that's for area 1 only okay you see I just shade the area 1 okay so using the same idea you can shade other parts as well so for the second part I would say it should be between fx and gx and that should be between x1 and x2 right so you see that part is shaded and okay and the last part I just want to create is um, x2 and 4 okay so okay and then you you could use the color you would like I don't like black so I, I might change the color as well okay might change to uh, orange whatever you like okay so right now okay so can we see possibly I need in the whole picture okay I think that one is um, possibly 10 to be fine okay all right so see these two uh, these three areas so it should be the orange area plus the green area equals the purple area how can you know you could get those numbers correct okay so let's try to play some animation if I get M change so see all three areas are that changing but the area above the straight line should always be greater than the area below the straight line if that's okay okay so that's the end of uh, ta uh, task 2 video okay see you next time bye